It's time for America Outdoors Radio, the show that covers the outdoor scene across the U.S. of A. and the entire continent. Fishing, hunting, conservation, outdoor recreation, and great destinations, we cover it all every week. It's your country, your outdoors. Let's explore it together with your host, John Cruz. You know I love to share big fish stories on the show, and that's how we're starting things off today. The place, Otisco Lake in New York. The angler, central New York resident Christopher Williams. The 31-year-old was jigging for bluegills under the ice when one of his tip-ups went up a few yards away. He ran over there, and in Williams' words, when he grabbed the rod, he noticed he only had about three feet of line left on the reel. Williams ended up pulling in that line by hand, and when he finally got the fish out of the hole in the ice, he found out he had landed a massive tiger muskie. Measuring the muskie, it taped out at 45 and a half inches long, which actually ties the world record muskie caught while ice fishing. However, William's tiger muskie weighed just over 26 pounds. Huge to be sure, but not as big as the 27 and a half pound world record caught out of, you guessed it, Otisco Lake. Well, Chris, you might not have broken the record, but you sure did catch the fish of a lifetime. And for that, congratulations. My thanks as well to Syracuse.com for sharing this great story. This week on America Outdoors Radio, we're going to start off talking to Tell Judkins with the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation about quail hunting in the Sooner State, where the season for them is still open for two more weeks. After that, we'll talk a little more about ice fishing when we chat with Joe Henry. He's the executive director for Lake of the Woods Tourism in Minnesota. There's a place up there called Angle Inlet that offers great ice fishing in the area. To get there, you actually travel through Canada and then come back down into Minnesota. One problem, though, the border remains closed due to COVID. So what did the community do here? They went and built their own 30-mile ice road on the U.S. side of the border so you can go there for some ice fishing this winter. And as you're going to hear, the ice fishing experience here is pretty darn special. Sticking with fishing, Abu Garcia is celebrating its 100th anniversary this year, and John Schlosser, the VP of Marketing for the company, will join us to tell you about the interesting history of this Swedish company that came out with the iconic Ambassador Level Wine Reel in the 1950s and has a great line of rods and reels available for you today. Continuing on, there's a new president in the White House, and that means some of the policies we've seen enacted regarding our public lands over the last four years are changing. John Gale, the conservation director for Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, will tell you more about that. We are also launching our first giveaway for 2021. We're giving away an electric kitchen knife sharpener from our friends at WorkSharp, and you can find details about how you can get a chance to win that on our America Outdoors Radio Facebook page. In other news, it may be winter right now, but spring turkey season isn't far away, and that's why I want to tell you about a brand new shotgun just for turkey hunters from Henry Repeating Arms. It's the single shot turkey camo 12 gauge shotgun, and it's completely decked out in mossy oak obsession camo. It has a removable turkey choke, fiber optic sights, and it's drilled and tapped in case you want to put other optics or a scope on top of it. Heck, this shotgun even has a soft rubber recoil pad to lessen the blow from that three and a half inch 12 gauge shell you'll be firing at that tom this spring. Like all of Henry's firearms, this shotgun is rugged, reliable, accurate, and of course, made in America. Check Check out the new single shot turkey camo shotgun at henryusa.com and while you're there ask for a free catalog and two free decals to go with it then look for a dealer near you and get geared up for turkey in 2021 the website again henryusa.com Next on America Outdoors Radio, a lot of you have hung up your shotguns because a lot of bird hunting seasons are over. That goes for a lot of you quail hunters too, but if you head to the state of Oklahoma, their quail season lasts until February 15th, and even if you're an out-of-state hunter, there is some opportunity waiting for you there. With us here to tell you more about it is Tell Judkins. He's the Upland Game Biologist with the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation. Tell, great to have you on the air. 
Yeah, John, thanks for having me on. It's, uh, it's a real pleasure. I look forward to hearing from some of your listeners and hopefully uh, helping them bag a few birds here in Oklahoma. Well, I think everybody loves quail hunting that's ever done it. Let's start off with the basics. The season goes until February 15th. What are the species that folks are going to find in Oklahoma, and what are the bag limits? So our bag limit overall is 10 daily, and you can't have any more than 20 in your possession after the first day. So if you start really getting into the quail, you're going to have to eat a few, stay within the limits there. But, you know, here in Oklahoma, we've got Bob White is our, our primary focus when it comes to quail. Uh, we do have a few scaled quail or blue quail, whichever you'd like to call them, primarily out in northwestern Oklahoma and in the panhandle range for those blue quail. Here's the next question. How accessible are these quail? Do you have a lot of public lands, a lot of wildlife management areas that provide suitable habitat for quail and good hunting for them? So here in Oklahoma, we've got over a million acres of public land available. Uh, and that's a mixture of our Oklahoma Land Access Program, which, you know, a lot of bird hunters are familiar with Kansas's Weehaw Program. So that's pretty similar to what we have here in Oklahoma. We also have our wildlife management areas. And each area is managed for different things, but we do have quite a bit of ground that's managed uh, primarily for quail and, and holds some decent bird numbers. I have read from Chad Love with uh, Quail Forever that quail hunting in Oklahoma, it can be challenging. These are not your gentleman Bob, Bob White quail. They tend to run wild and flush wild too, and they've been hunted all season. Correct, and, and Chad definitely hits it on the head there. Here in Oklahoma, we've got pretty much any kind of eco region that you wanted to hunt. And so if you wanted to hunt pine timber, you can do that. If you want to hunt, you know, rolling hills, uh, sand hills and tall grasses, then we definitely have that as well. And everything in between. This time of year, quail have definitely been pushed around quite a bit. They become a little bit harder to find, a little bit trickier to work. And they do flush pretty wild. But, you know, to have an opportunity to get your dogs on some wild birds one more time, I definitely think you could probably get that done here in Oklahoma, even this late in the game. Well, that sounds like a great opportunity to me. Let's break it down a little bit more. I have heard, again, going back to Chad Love from Quail Forever, that generally speaking, if you're a quail hunter, you're going to want to focus west of Interstate 35 in Oklahoma City. Is that true, or is there some opportunity in eastern Oklahoma as well? It is opportunity across the state. It really comes down to what kind of hunt you want and what kind of hunter you are. Uh, and I say that with some air quotes. You know, uh, east of I-35 is definitely going to be a more challenging hunt. This last weekend, I actually worked six coveys over a day and a half in eastern Oklahoma. That being said, I, I fired my gun twice and <laughs> didn't come home with a bird. But my dog got plenty of work. Western Oklahoma, you may have a day where the scent conditions are, are not ideal and, and you don't find many birds. And you may have a day that's just perfect and you, you're able to kick up three or four coveys and, and maybe put a couple in the in the vest and call it a great day. It really comes down to what you're wanting. Most folks that I talk to, I typically send towards northwestern Oklahoma. Historically, that is kind of our Bob White hot spot, our better area of the state for quail uh, that has a longer history of management and therefore uh, a, probably a better chance of encountering some birds. For some of our listeners, especially out-of-state listeners tuning in today, who might want to head to Oklahoma for this last couple weeks of hunting, what are some tips you would give them to help them succeed? You know, one of the big things is focus on habitat and focus on areas where you're finding habitat. If you could imagine a, a soda can with legs trying to run through this ground that you're walking, one, if, if you're having trouble getting through it or your dog's having trouble getting through it, you're probably not going to find many birds in it. So focus on those a little bit more open areas. Focus on shrubs, things like shinnery oak or sand plum or sumac. Those are definitely the, the parts of the, the areas or lands that quail are going to be more focused in uh, because that's the areas that are providing the habitat components they need this time of year. Are there some additional resources that folks can check out on the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation website? Certainly. So feel free to go to our, our website, which is wildlifedepartment.com. There you've got a couple of options. You can go to what to hunt or where to hunt. Where to Hunt offers digital maps and uh, downloadable PDFs of our WMAs that you can print off or have saved on your phone or tablet so that you have access to them while you're in the field. We also have digital maps for our Oklahoma Land Access programs where you can zoom in and see what species are available, any closed dates or anything like that that are available. And then you can also go to our What to Hunt. Our What to Hunt page has a lot of information on quail, quail management, as well as other species that are available to, to hunt here in this great state of Oklahoma. 
All right. The Sooner State offering you one last chance to get some quail before it's all over. It lasts until February 15th if you want to go after Bob White or Scaled Quail. And just go to the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife and Conservation website to find out more and plan your trip today. Tell, thanks for sharing this with us on America Outdoors Radio. Thanks, John, and I appreciate you having me on. Last thing I'll add is, remember, the Oklahoma outdoors are always open. Work some ground, trust your dog, and make a memory. Ready to step up to a quality-built rifle or shotgun that's a true classic? Check out Henry Repeating Arms, American-made. There's over 200 models to choose from in a variety of finishes and calibers for hunters and target shooters. Many of these are lever-action models with a look right out of the Old West. Don't be deceived, though. Henry Repeating Arms are modern, rugged, accurate, reliable, and have a lifetime guarantee. Find out more and order a free catalog today at HenryUSA.com. That's HenryUSA.com. Campers, adventure seekers, hunters, and foodies. No matter the lifestyle, we can all agree on one thing. Great food and great people are worth remembering. At Camp Chef, we don't just make grills. We create each product knowing that a warm meal is always better when it's shared with those we love. Learn more about Camp Chef grills, smokers, and portable cooking equipment at CampChef.com. That's CampChef.com for a better way to cook outdoors. Backcountry Hunters and Anglers is the voice for your public lands, waters, and wildlife. From the Canadian Yukon to the Florida Everglades, we're stepping up to conserve North America's public lands, defend our hunting and fishing traditions, and expand public access to the outdoors. Our outdoor heritage depends on sportsmen and women like you speaking up for the natural resources that sustain our way of life. Find out how you can get involved at backcountryhunters.org and become a BHA member today. With all my new gear, Mike got the bait, I bought the beer. Soros. I got a nice pair of boots to go with my hat, my blazer, and suit. Welcome back to America Outdoors Radio. I'm John Cruz. I've got a great story for you about American ingenuity, about how when the going gets tough, the tough get going. The setting is Angle Inlet in Minnesota. It's ice fishing season there, and that's big business for the resorts and the local economy every year. To get there, you cross the border from the U.S. into Canada. You drive 40 miles, and then you come back into the U.S. at the northwest angle of Minnesota. The only part of the U.S. above the 48th parallel. This winter, though, the border to Canada remains closed because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So what did this community do? Well, they built their own road to Angle Inlet that stays in the United States. With us here to tell you more is Joe Henry, the executive director for Lake of the Woods Tourism in Minnesota. Joe, welcome to the show. John, thanks for having me. Thank you. So how did this idea of building an ice road come together and where exactly does this new 30-mile route go through? Well, I'll tell you, it's the culmination of hardworking uh, Minnesota businesses that really, quite frankly, their backs against the wall and they had to do something. You know, the, the pandemic and, and the border closure, the whole thing started back in mid-March. So these 12 resorts up at the Northwest Angle, these 12 business owners lost half of March last year. They lost all of their spring, summer, and fall. Nobody ever thought this thing would continue into the winter. Right. And here we are. So they said, geez, you know, we're going broke. We got to do something. So they came up and put their heads together and they came up with the Northwest Dingle Guest Ice Road. And, you know, it's it's 30 miles. So, you know, basically 22 miles you know, are over ice. And then, you know, another uh, eight miles or so is through a, a forest along the border trail. And, you know, uh, it's very interesting because, you know, just putting an ice road together, it is so laborious and broken. Equi- I mean, they had over 200 hours into this ice road before the first guest even traveled it. Wow. Wow. But it's up and running now and folks are coming there. When they come to the Northwest Angle, what are they fishing for primarily? You know, it's uh, Lake of the Woods is the walleye capital of the world. And uh, obviously, with all due respect to other great bodies of water, we have a lot of walleyes and they're coming up to catch walleyes. They're also going to be catching saugers, jumbo perch, pike, eel pout, tulabee. 
uh, you know, that sort of thing. But primarily walleyes and saugers is what they're going to be catching when they come up. Are most folks doing this as DIY trips and bringing their, their own gear and heading out of the ice, or are they staying at resorts in the area? The majority of people going up to the Northwest Angle are staying at resorts. You know, uh, when, when you get up to the Angle, you know, we have uh, we have about a dozen resorts, and about eight of those resorts operate in the winter time. You know, all four seasons. So basically, they they have houses out there that are heated, that the holes are drilled, and they keep moving the fish houses around to, to stay in the walleyes. So what you normally would do is you know, get up in the morning and uh, jump in their heated ice transportation. And usually, it's a bombardier, a track rig with skis in the front, and uh, they'll take you out to those destination where those walleye are living. There's there's an ice road that goes out to the island resorts, so you can go to your cabins and things, but there isn't a road system up there for fishing. So consequently, they normally would take you out to your heated fish house. Oh, I absolutely love this. So tell me a little bit more about these heated fish houses. I, I'm guessing there's a little propane heater in there. Are you sitting on a bucket? I mean, do they have chairs? I mean, you know, are we talking satellite TV? What are we talking about <laughs> in these ice what? fishing houses? I hear they're pretty fancy up in your neck of the woods. They certainly can be. You know what? Uh, I'll tell you, it's interesting. You know, a lot of times when you talk to people who don't know a lot about ice fishing, they envision somebody sitting on a bucket freezing out in the open. And that just isn't the way things go nowadays. You know, technology has uh, advanced. And, you know, if, if ice fishing was people sitting on a bucket and freezing trying to catch fish, the sliver of people that enjoyed it would be very low. It would be the hardcore anglers, right? right. So by, by making the experience much more enjoyable, imagine this. Imagine that you wake up in the morning with your friends or family. And some are anglers, perhaps. Some are non-anglers. When you wake up, you have a beautiful breakfast. You know, at uh, 7.30 uh, is when uh, the bombardier will take you out to your fish house. You, you grab your buckets of fish and stuff and whatever kind of food that you want for lunch. And some people even bring beverages. And uh, they, they take you out to the fish house. You start catching walleyes and saugers and whatever else. They check on you a few times throughout the day. You know, it, it's social time. It's like fishing in a living room. It's uh, 70, 72 degrees. You're having great social time. You're catching fish at about uh, 4.30 or so when the, when the sun starts going down. The ice guide will pick you and your fish up, bring you back into the resort for happy hour, and they'll even clean your fish for you. And if you want, the resort will even cook them up for their fresh catch. So it's really an, an enjoyable experience. And, and that's one of the, the novelties. You know, that's why people are, are doing it. You know, it's a cold Minnesota winter, but you're out enjoying it. But you're enjoying it in comfort because... Quite frankly, the resorts are taking all the work out of it. This sounds absolutely fabulous. Are, are these trips really expensive? Or are they, they affordable for the average family and average angler? Oh, yeah, no, they're, they're affordable. And, you know, it, it, it's interesting, too, because, for instance, when you go to the Northwest Angle Fishing, if you want to shoot up there and stay in a cabin and, and cook your own meals and, and just, you know, use the resort for the cabin and for the ice fishing, you can go that route. At the same time, we have resorts up there that have the restaurant and the bar, and uh, you, you can go that route, or you can do a little bit of both. We have some that are, are a little bit more simply priced. They don't have all the frills. And then we have resorts that are absolutely beautiful, full service, big log cabin lodge. I mean, you know, we, we got a little bit of everything. So it's absolutely affordable. You know, if it wasn't affordable, we wouldn't have people coming up. I have uh, people tell me all the time that compared to, you know, other areas that they travel to, they couldn't believe how cheap it was to go ice fishing. How long does the ice stay fishable in northern Minnesota in this area? I mean, I know it changes from year to year, but give or take, are we talking through March? Yes, we are. Yep. In fact, you know, uh, in the rest of Minnesota, you're allowed to keep fish houses overnight on the ice uh, around the 1st of March, give or take a little bit based on where Minnesota are. Because we're border water with Canada, you know, we're allowed to keep our fish houses on the ice through the month of March. And then uh, we also have extended season on our fishing. So where the walleye season would normally end end of February down in the, the south part of the state, you know, up where we're at, our walleye season goes till uh, April 14th. And then, you know, the uh, pike season never closes. So there's always something to fish for up at Lake of the Woods. And it gives us almost a whole extra month. What is the, the daily limit for walleye and perch and pike, if you know? We have a limit that's a combined limit of walleyes and saugers of six fish. Up to four of those fish can be walleyes. We also have a slot limit. The slot limit allows us sustainability with our walleye fishery. 19 and a half inches to 28 inches must be returned to the water. So you keep your walleyes that are under 19 and a half, which quite frankly, are your best eaters anyway. Right. And you can keep one over 28 in case you want to keep one for the wall. We have a lot of big walleyes in Lake of the Woods. And you know, there's, there's many times you'll catch a 28, 29, 30, 31, even 32 incher and uh, some big, big fish in that lake. Uh, you mentioned jumbo perch. Just how jumbo are they? 
oh, we get perch that are, uh, you know, 15 plus inches at times. And, you know, it's funny, we don't have the kind of a system where you're going to go target perch and catch buckets full. What ends up happening is when you're fishing for your walleyes, you're going to hook into a fish that you think is a nice walleye and you pull it up and it's a perch about the size of a walleye. And, wow. uh, they're just huge. Because of our stained water in Lake of the Woods, the colors just pop. The greens, the orange fins, they're really, really neat looking fish. And of course, the, the big ones have the big humpbacks on their heads when they go up. They're just huge, big slabs. Oh, Joe, you've got me excited to come to the very north part of Minnesota and go fishing with you. What's the website where folks can find out more? Yeah, you want to find out more about the Northwest Angle, you know, check out our, our Lake of the Woods tourism website, and that's Lake of the Woods. MN for Minnesota, Lake of the Woods, MN.com. Lake of the Woods, MN.com. That's the website to go to if you want to head to Angle Inlet on the brand new 30 mile long ice road and enjoy some of this fantastic fishing. Joe, thanks for sharing this with us today on America Outdoors Radio. So good fishing, everybody. And on that note, we'll wrap up this segment the way we started it with a little music from that funny Wisconsin group, Shad Rap. Why book at Sportsman's Cove Lodge? Why is Alaska like no other place on earth? It hasn't changed in thousands of years. From the way you get here on a float plane to the way you go out with the guides and the boats, it's just a professional experience. And I said, this is as good as it gets. I said, if you can't catch fish here, you can't catch fish anywhere. Your experience with us will leave you speechless. Book now at alaskasbestlodge.com. The Dalles in Oregon is your base camp for fishing fun. Reel in big salmon, tangle with steelhead, bass, and walleye, or wrestle a monster sturgeon to the boat. After the day is done, you'll find a variety of lodging options around town. Need to resupply? We've got you covered with sporting goods stores plus great dining, breweries, wineries, and can't-miss attractions like the Gorge Discovery Center. Plan your fishing getaway today at explorethedalles.com. That's explorethedalles.com. You're back in with America Outdoors Radio. I'm John Cruz, and we need to say happy birthday to a very famous company out there. It's Abu Garcia. They are celebrating their 100th anniversary in existence this year. Launched in 1921, and 100 years later, they're not just going strong. They are on fire. With us here to tell you more about the Abu Garcia story and some of their latest products is John Schlosser, the VP of Marketing for the company. John, great to have you back on the air. Thank you, John. Good to be here. So why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about the Abu Garcia story? I knew that Abu Garcia was originally a Swedish company, but that's about all I knew. Yeah, sure. It's uh, it's a quite interesting story, John. Uh, so the company, as you mentioned, was, was started in 1921 by a gentleman named uh, Carl Borgström in Sphinx to Sweden, right on the Morham River. And, you know, the, the company, he was, he was actually a watchmaker by trade, and his factory specialized in the time in taxi meters. And at the onset of, of World War II in Europe, they really redirected their skills into starting to make precision fishing reels for anglers all around the world. So really neat um, uh, story there. You know, and then much later in time, you know, merged with U.S.-based company uh, Garcia, uh, which was the is where the Garcia side of it comes from. So, you know, r- really a rich history, um, you know, still got roots in Sweden today. So fun story. You know, what was really interesting to me, diving a little deeper into the Abu story, was they didn't originally make fishing reels. Like you said, they were watchmakers, and I understand they used to make parking meters. But during World War II, there was no demand for parking meters, as you might imagine. Not a whole lot of people were parking in streets that were getting blown up. So he transitioned to becoming a fishing reel maker. And what was it? Was it 1952 that the famous ambassador reel was rolled out for all of us to use for decades afterwards? That's right. Certainly one of the most iconic reels in the Abu Garcia range is the ambassador or, you know, as many consumers call it, the round reel. And, you know, certainly um, a a legacy product for us as a company that, you know, quite honestly, we still sell a large amount of those reels today, still manufactured in Sphinx to Sweden. 
that is is just amazing to me the staying power of that reel there's there's certain reels that are just legacy reels looking in my studio i've got a mitchell 300 that was made in france it has my grandfather's initials etched on it and i also have one of those original abu garcias from the 1950s and you know if i wanted to fish them they would still work just fine today let's fast forward to the 21st century and talk about what kind of reels Abu Garcia is making now besides the famous ambassador. Yeah, sure. So over time, John, the, the market has started to transition from a casting reels perspective into what we call low profiles. So it's a more sleek design of, of round reels, but basically the same function. And, you know, we've been manufacturing those and, and leading the way in that market as well for quite some time. And, you know, our, our main ranges there are the Revo range under Abu Garcia for, you know, avid anglers, as well as our Max range, which has just been a really mainstay for us in the low profile game. When it comes to low profile reels, is it just bass anglers that are using these or are there folks after other species as well? No, absolutely not. I mean, certainly it would over-index towards bass anglers, but there's uh, walleye anglers and, you know, basically any type of fishing that's going on for typically like game type fish, you would see low profile uh, creeping in. We're even starting to see them in the saltwater game some now. Now, in addition to the bait casting reels, you also make spinning reels. I've owned some over the years. I'll be honest. One of them, the Cardinal, back in the 80s and 90s, not one of my favorites, had a really weak bale spring, at least every one I had did. But the ones I have now, they are just a dream to fish with. And you've got some really high-end ones, too. I understand there's one called the Zeta, comes in both a spin cast model and a spinning model, too. That's right. Yeah, Zeta is a new range for us, John. Uh, we just launched that, you know, probably about four months ago, and it's um, it's done very well. We've had that in the market now, and, you know, consumers are, are certainly chasing that product. It's a great value with great high-end features of, you know, that you would expect from a, you know, three $400 reel, and, you know, we're starting to get that at much more accessible price points for consumers. And, yeah, the, the Zeta has done fast and fantastic, and it is a just beautiful-looking reel. Oh, it is. It's absolutely gorgeous. If you can't find it at your local sporting goods dealer yet, go to the Abu Garcia website. Check it out there. It is a thing of beauty. And I love the fact it's got 11 ball bearings. That's just incredible for a guy like me who grew up using one ball bearing and was really impressed when I got two <laughs> or three. <laughs> That's right. It just seems like we just keep doing more and more in that game, right? And just making the reels, you know, smoother and smoother. People think of Abu Garcia as a fishing reel company, but you're also a fishing rod company, too. Let's talk about some of the latest rods that you have out and especially some of your best sellers. Yeah, sure. So big change for us um, last fall, John, we relaunched um, our Veritas range. These are the uh, all white rods. And, you know, they've been a mainstay of our, our range for quite some time. But in the relaunch year, um, we were actually able to bring some proprietary resin to the system. And not to get too technical, but uh, effectively what the resin does for us is enables us to make a, a much lighter rod, which helps with sensitivity um, to feel the bite, all while still making the rod stronger. And we're doing all of that now at a $100 retail price point, which has just been fantastic value for consumers and just a all around great rod. And you should certainly check that one out. That sounds really impressive. And it's interesting that just like the evolution of fishing reels, the evolution of fishing rods where we had glass and then fiberglass and then graphite and then different variations of graphite. I presume this Veritas rod, this is also a graphite rod or is it graphite more? It it is. It's graphite, and we're using a um, proprietary resin that we, we actually trade name called Powerlux. Um, so when you look for that Powerlux, you know that that's got a nano resin in it that it brings the talking about. Okay, last but not least, 2021, can you tell us anything that's coming out this year that our listeners should be excited about? Yeah, I actually hit a couple of things there, uh, John. So we, we will obviously debut a, a bunch of stuff at ICAST in July. But, you know, in nearer term, that max range that I was talking about that, you know, is a, is a great value range for us, historically known mostly as Black Max and, and Silver Max and, and Pro Max. You'll see some new changes to that range here real soon like March kind of soon. <laughs> so okay. uh, we've got some big revamps coming there. I mean, the one that I'm really excited about, and, you know, we're starting to show this in the market, it's showing up in some publications and so forth, is the new Xenon reel. So this is certainly a high-end reel that we've brought to market for spinning reels. 
it will be the lightest spinning reel on the market. And get this, a 20 size weighs in at 4.9 ounces. Oh my goodness, that is incredible. I, I presume it's made out of aluminum? Uh, it is, I mean, and a lot of carbon fiber and stuff in it as well, but it's uh, a yeah, super lightweight reel. I think that the team's really outdone themselves here. Oh, can't wait to see that. Uh, we've just got about a minute and a half left. I do want to talk about one other thing that rolls into the whole 100th anniversary for Abu Garcia. You're about to publish a list of the 100 top fisheries in America as determined by a panel of experts and from input you've been getting from fans of Abu Garcia Rod and Reels. Tell us more about this and when we'll get to see it. That's right. Yeah. So we, we have been out talking to consumers through our social media channels and, and any other way they'll listen to us um, about celebrating our 100 year anniversary by celebrating the top 100 fishing spots. And we've been soliciting feedback from consumers. They've been submitting that in. You know, and it, it's really interesting with, with Abu Garcia, we talk a lot about fish to win, you know, taking this uh, more athletic nature with this brand. And that doesn't necessarily mean tournament angling. That could be me and you out fishing, who's going to catch the first one or the biggest one, or you out fishing and kept catching your personal best. And we think this is just a great way to celebrate that. We do have a, a panel of judges, um, you know, everyone from Dr. Keith Jones, who's a legendary fish scientist on the, um, used to work for Berkeley, pro fisherman Mike Iaconelli, pro dirt bike racer Malcolm Stewart. Uh, we have a great panel of judges that is helping us put together the top 100 fishery. Well, I can't wait to see that once that's out. Uh, if nothing else, it'll give us some great ideas about where to go fishing in the year ahead. If folks want to find out more, I presume they should go to abugarcia.com? You got it. All right, that's the website to go to to check out all the products we just told you about. And, of course, you're going to find them in quality sporting goods stores all over the nation. And one last thing, folks, about Abu Garcia that I really like is they really do have quality offerings. And I've got a bunch of their max offerings in terms of rod reel combos. No matter what your price point is, you're going to find something that you can afford and that you're going to like. Again, abugarcia.com is your first stop. Then head on down to your local store, pick up a new rod reel or both and get to fishing. John, thanks for sharing this with us today on America Outdoors Radio. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Why book at Sportsman's Cove Lodge? Why is Alaska like no other place on Earth? It hasn't changed in thousands of years. From the way you get here on a float plane to the way you go out with the guides and the boats, it's just a professional experience. And I said, this is as good as it gets. I said, if you can't catch fish here, you can't catch fish anywhere. Your experience with us will leave you speechless. Book now at alaskasbestlodge.com. The election is over, and this is not another political ad. But with a change in president, there is uncertainty. Uncertainty in the market. Will it be up or will it be down? Uncertainty on how the new administration will handle taxes for your retirement. A new report states that the Biden administration may take away key tax benefits to traditional retirement plans. But what if there was a better way, a way to save for retirement tax-free? We can help business owners, freelancers, and regular working folks get on track with their retirement without risk and without taxes. For more information, get your no-cost tax-free retirement income strategy guide now by calling 888-585-1615. That's 888-585-1615. Find out how sound investment principles can give you a retirement where you eliminate the spend down of your savings and create more income for your retirement tax-free. Call today and get the free guide, 888-585-1615. That's 888-585-1615. Call now, 888-585-1615. Our American spirit is alive and strong. And while we're all going through these unprecedented historical times, we can face these challenges together. Hello, I'm Mark Hemstreet, owner of Shiloh Inns. Although we may wear face masks and practice social distancing, there are no restrictions on making travel memories for business or pleasure. Taking care of our Shiloh guests and employees is the very essence of what we do. At Shiloh Inns, we're open and ready to welcome you to a clean, safe home away from home. You'll find extra cleaning and sanitizing protocols in place for the safety of our guests and employees. At Shiloh Inns, we offer many free amenities like free Wi-Fi and even the kids stay free. So book your next stay with confidence at ShilohInns.com or call 1-800-222-2244. Shiloh Inns, affordable excellence. 
American family owned and proud of it. Hunting and fishing are exercises in hope. Before you head into the woods, you hope to tag out on a deer you'll have to field dress. Before you make that first cast, you hope for a big fish to clean and fillet. When your hopes are realized, you'll need a sharp knife. Whether you sharpen that blade on a power sharpener in the shop or a manual sharpener in the field, WorkSharp has the tool for you. Look for WorkSharp products in sporting goods stores near you or online at WorkSharpTools.com. Next up on America Outdoors Radio, the times, they are a-changing. I've got that old Bob Dylan tune running through my head because, in case you've been living under a rock, you're probably aware we've got a new president in the White House. His name is Joe Biden. And from a conservation point of view, he is making some changes from what was being done by the Trump administration. With us here to tell you more about these changes that have already occurred and ones that are on the near horizon is John Gale. He's the conservation director director for Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. John, great to have you back on the air. Thanks, John. It's great to be back. So let's start off with President Biden. He's already signed some executive orders, starting with the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. What happened there? Well, we saw oil and gas development unleashed on the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, the largest in the country, under the Trump administration and Congress. And what we feel is probably the most important last wild frontier in Alaska has been under threat. There was an oil and gas lease sale that happened just earlier this month. And so this executive order essentially halts that oil and gas activity in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, something that we asked the Biden administration to do in our transition document. I understand very few people actually bid on those leases. One of the bidders was actually the state of Alaska. Do those bidders get their leases or do they lose those as well? Well, assuming they they meet the, the minimum bid threshold, they get the leases, but then there is a bit of a limbo period and other regulatory processes that, that play out. So once you secure the lease, it makes it more difficult for the Biden administration to you know, allow that development activity to take place. But there's a lot of other regulatory hurdles that the leaseholder has to go through. Like they have to secure an application for permit to drill. So the Biden administration could make the standards and criteria for those applications for permits to drill or APDs uh, so onerous that a leaseholder wouldn't be interested in it. Setting up a conversation or negotiation for buying back those leases. And you're right, you know, the lease sale is a huge failure just because there's very limited interest in developing oil and gas resources there. Super expensive and the price of a barrel of oil is so low right now that, you know, all the big boy players are not interested. Wall Street's yanked all their investments from the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. So there's no real good reason there other than politics. Let's talk about national monuments. Now, what seems a lifetime ago at the beginning of the Trump administration, President Trump rolled back some of the national monuments that had been designated by President Obama. And folks, in in case you weren't aware of this, presidents have the ability to declare a piece of land a national monument. They can't make it a national park, but they can make it a national monument. So, President Biden, do you see some of these monuments that President Obama designated coming back under President Biden? And if so, which ones? Yeah, well, none of the national monuments were completely erased, but monuments such as Grand Staircase Escalante, a monument designated by President Clinton, and Bears Ears, a monument designated by President Obama, both in Utah, had their Acreage significantly reduced, borders significantly reduced in order to facilitate oil and gas development, uh, uranium mining, all sorts of development activities. And we see this review initiated under Biden executive order, a great way to hopefully regain that acreage and sort of restore the integrity of the Antiquities Act, something that President Theodore Roosevelt put in place. It was Buna Crockett was a huge architect of the law with Theodore Roosevelt back in the day. So hunters and anglers and, and sportsmen and women have a lot of history and important heritage attached to the Antiquities Act and something that, that we care a lot about as an organization, too. Let's talk about 
our national parks, our national forests, and other places. Uh, one thing the Trump administration did was help get the Great American Outdoors Act passed, which uh, funneled a lot of money into some long-deferred maintenance projects on these lands. Do you anticipate this is going to continue under the Biden administration, or are we going to see some changes regarding the operation of some of our national treasures? Absolutely. I think the Great American Outdoors Act, which dedicated LWCS funding permanently at $900 million a year, something that was only previously authorized, that had to go through congressional appropriations process. And the good point you made about the deferred maintenance fund that was created from that legislation also will go into helping not only Park Service backlog maintenance uh, issues, but all maintenance backlogs across other management bureaus, such as BLM, Forest Service, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and Bureau of Indian Education Lands. So we expect that to move forward. It's been a major priority of Congress, not something that, you know, administrations, you know, tend to dwell on too much. It's it's something that's operated out of the agency side, and, and Congress is a real important watchdog there. So we expect that to move forward, and it's a huge priority for us to see those landscapes better manage, especially as we look at forest health, thinning practices, and reducing fuel loads to help mitigate the impact of wildfire. The new heads of the Department of Agriculture, which is in charge of the U.S. Forest Service, and the Department of Interior, which is in charge of national parks, are you happy about these, or should we have concerns as hunters, anglers, and outdoors enthusiasts? Well, Tom Bilsack is a known quantity from the Obama administration, so we don't have too many question marks there, but Congressman Holland from New Mexico, who has been nominated to lead the interior, is uh, someone we haven't seen in a position like that before. She comes from an important public land state, and I think uh, her connection to Native Americans is a really important thing. But we, we shall see how she does in terms of balancing a landscape that's guided by a multiple use mandate that allows for recreation and important things like fish and wildlife habitat, but also mining and oil and gas development and renewable energy development. So I think it'll be an important test for her and we'll see and we will hold all these leaders and decision makers accountable for their decisions just as we did under the Trump administration, uh, applauding when they do great things and holding them accountable when they do things that run contrary to the interests of hunters and anglers and the health of our public lands and waters and fish and wildlife habitat. Very well said. And folks, if you want to find out more about Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, this is the organization that's made up of people like you and me who love to fish, who love to hunt, who love to recreate our public lands. And this organization is all about protecting our public lands and allowing us to do these things on them. If you want to find out more, go to backcountryhunters.org. Become a member. There's nearly 50,000 of us that are members of this organization now. I'm a member. I hope you will join too and make your voice heard for our public lands and conservation. John, thanks so much for sharing this with us today on America Outdoors Radio. Thank you, John. Have a great day. I think it's time for our first giveaway of 2021, and it's coming to you from our friends at WorkSharp. You've heard me talk about this great company before. They're based in Oregon, and they sell quality-built knife and tool sharpeners online at WorkSharpTools.com and all over the nation in quality sporting goods and hardware stores, too. What are we giving away this month? How about a kitchen knife sharpener that retails for $50? This compact plug-in sharpener will sharpen every knife in your kitchen to include serrated edge knives and even your kitchen shears. And let's face it, that's where your knives get the most use and need the best edge. This sharpener is easy to use and has an angle guide, so you get the perfect edge to each of these knives and shears. If you want a chance to win this, here's what you do. Just go to our Facebook page at America Outdoors Radio. Step one, like and follow the page. Step two, look for the post thread where we have this giveaway and just let us know what city and state you're from. If you want a bonus entry, just let us know what station you're listening to. You only get to enter once, though, and if you don't do Facebook, don't worry. You can also enter by emailing us through our website at americaoutdoorsradio.com. We'll pick one lucky winner for this electric kitchen knife sharpener after our last broadcast on Valentine's Day.
As we wrap things up, we continue to get news of sportsman shows and other events that just can't open up during this time of COVID, though there certainly are some that are still trying, and we wish those events the best. In the meantime, if you can't go to one of the shows we're used to going to at this time of year, do something outside. I know the weather's not perfect, but bundle up, get on out there, do a little fishing, do a little hiking, break out the binoculars for some wildlife watching, It'll do your soul some good during these troubled times. Until next week, I do hope you stay healthy. I do hope you are blessed. And I do hope, like I said, that you can get outside and enjoy a healthy dose of Mother Nature. After all, it is your country and you're outdoors. So get out there and enjoy it. Are you looking to reel in the marketing opportunity of a lifetime? Then set the hook because we've got it right here for you. America Outdoors Radio has sponsorships available, and we offer affordable platforms to reach thousands of listeners interested in fishing, hunting, and the outdoors. Find out more by contacting John Cruz through his website at AmericaOutdoorsRadio.com.